What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DSN News Desk. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your time and support as we're fresh off a 141-134 Detroit Pistons victory tonight against the Charlotte Hornets on the road in very impressive fashion. And I got to say, honestly, as a Piston fan myself, it rejuvenated a lot of hope that I had to start the season for this Detroit Pistons team. Now, what I mean by that is we've had a rough week in terms of the news that's come over the Detroit Pistons. There's been a lot of trade rumors. Uh, we know the Kay Cunningham news that broke about him being done for the season, opting to take surgery, and clean his leg up to be get ready for next season. So, with that being said, and what we learned through hearing that this week, a lot of optimism and hope kind of went out the window with it. Games like this, to an extent, a little bit, kind of rejuvenated some of my hope and desire to want to watch this Detroit Pistons team. Now, to keep things in perspective, the Charlotte Hornets are one of the few other teams just as bad as the Pistons, especially in the Eastern Conference. And it was a tough, you know, grind out game between both of them. Uh, the Pistons did a good job in terms of their scoring balance. They did a really good job in terms of some of their paint protection with Jalen Durant and Isaiah Stewart, who we're going to talk about in a little bit. You were able to withstand some runs from Piston killer uh, Kelly Oubre. Uh, Terry Rozier got off before he fouled out. LaMelo Ball had a really nice game. Like, there were some pretty good contributions and some swings where the Hornets maybe could have ran away with the game. But the Pistons did a really good job themselves. I mean, they also had three players above 20 points themselves. They had a really good job in terms of scoring. Uh, 24 from Bojan, 25 from Killian Hayes, 27 from Alec Burks, who led the way. And it was super encouraging to see because what we know about the Pistons, knowing that K is not going to be here, it kind of took a lot of sail and hope in terms of what their watchability would look like without him on the court. To me, I think we're getting a lot of restored hope in terms of just watchability for now. I don't think they're going to go on a streak of wins anytime soon. I don't think they're going to be a playoff contender or anything like that. But in terms of wanting to see young players develop and watch them compete on a night-to-night -night basis, you're kind of getting that to the tune of what we saw last season with the Detroit Pistons. And I got three little takeaways that I kind of want to get into. One of which I don't think fans are going to agree with or like, but we'll talk about it and see if it's fair. Let's, let's just go step by step. First of all, Killian Hayes is becoming must-see TV. I can't praise this guy enough for what he's done. <laughs> if you've been on Twitter, if you've been on social media, you see Lee Hayes' apology for him floating around. I ain't filled by it out yet because I got too many areas I got to check off. But he deserves so much credit for how fantastic he's been playing lately, man. I don't, I don't recognize this dude at all. If you had told me that Killian Hayes was coming out looking like the Pistons MVP by, you know, the Christmas market this season, I would have said you were high on something. But here we are. <laughs> I'm agreeing with it because Killian Hayes has been setting the tone. He's hitting clutch shots. He's not turning the ball over at an enormous rate like he maybe used to before. He is a completely different player. Again, 25 points, 9 and 19 from the field, 5 of 11 from 3, and some of the catch and shoot opportunities as well. So he got him in a plethora of different ways. 7 rebounds, 8 assists, flirted with a triple double, and he came off. With He had 12 points to start the first quarter, but then got in foul trouble. So he cooled off and had to sit for a little while. But as soon as he got right back on the court, Killian Hayes picked up right where he left off. It's a lot of apologies owed to this man. He is turning into must-see TV. He's turning into the Detroit James Harden at this point. J Killian Hayes is morphing into something we did not expect to see this season. Piston fans, I know you lied if you say you did. If you expected him to turn it around, that's fine. But I don't think anybody expected Killian to look this good. That I don't see. I think maybe if you could have had, you know, maybe he's averaging playing around 15 points a game, you know, giving you like 15, 6, and 5, something like that. That would have been serviceable and people would have said, oh, Killian's turning the corner. He's making, a, you know, a progression in his game. At this point, he's sitting here playing like he's trying to be mentioned along the elite guards in the game. Because he's playing and shooting with no fear. He's playing defense with no fear. And even with some of the tough shots that Kelly or yeah, Kelly Oubre was hitting and Terry Rozier, some of the tough shots they were hitting where Killian had a hand in the face, he was still playing good defense. His defense has not been sacrificed at all in this offensive resurgence that we're seeing from him. I'm so proud of Killian Hayes, man. Way to go. Way to go, Killian Hayes. 
If this keeps up, man, you got to throw him in the conversation for most improved player. I don't care. Put him in the discussion at this point. Um, something else that I took away from the game that I'm really starting to enjoy from the Pistons. I remember earlier in the season, I brought up the idea of altering the starting lineup. I wanted to see Kay Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq, Bojan, and then Jalen Dern at the five. I was wrong about that because the Pistons have made a change that I am really starting to get comfortable with and really starting to enjoy watching as it develops between the two. Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart playing together in the front court with Bojan at the three was a tremendous update. And that's for Coach Casey, that's to his credit. So shout out to him for being able to make that happen. A little bit was due to injury, but finding something that works is helpful and needed with this team. And Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart are playing phenomenal together defensively on the glass they have been super productive even tonight Jalen Duren 19 rebounds cleaned up on three block shots as well and then Beef Stew was able to give you 11 boards as well while also scoring 19 points but this is the part that I like when Beef Stew was the center a lot more was kind of heaped on his plate for what he would have to do in terms of defensively and offensively. And he was stepping into a position where he was strictly taking shots from the perimeter offensively. I think since the development of adding Duran to the starting lineup has given him more of a license to create different shots offensively. Now, yes, he's still shooting pretty decent from outside. He just shot two or three from three point line today. And a lot of other plays he was making, he had a couple dunks in transition, but he's isolating a lot more often than I've ever seen him do. There were a couple possessions where they gave uh, Stu the ball on the elbow. Dern would set a pick for him, and then Stewart would be able to find his way to get space up to the rim or close to the paint where he could get a hook shot or some kind of like jumper to get closer up to the rim for a layup. He has really found a comfort zone in not just the three-point shot, but in terms of his drives as well. And that's something we have never really seen from Isaiah Stewart. I'm super impressed with how that's developed for him, and I think that's helpful due to the pairing of a Jalen Duran next to him, where all the rebounding assignment and the necessity is not on Beef Stew anymore. You now can share that responsibility with Jalen Duran. You're now not you know predicated on protecting the paint as much as anybody else. So now when he switches to the outside or if he plays offensive on the perimeter, he's more comfortable with it because he doesn't have to just do, just bear the responsibility of guarding the paint on his own. He's doing more things and he's thriving at it. Listen, I owe, we just talked about apology for him. I think I owe beef stew an apology as well. While I thought he was better served in the bench unit. And I still think to an extent that could be true, depending on how the Pistons roster folds out. I owe him an apology because he has been a lot more impressive than I thought he would be this season. A big question mark we were anticipating with him was how he was going to look shooting the three ball this year. And he's shooting 37% from behind the line, 36.6. If you want to round it up, it's 37. And I do. I'm that kind of teacher. So we're going to round up to 37 because nobody expected that from Beef Stew. If he would have said, again, it's kind of like Killian Hayes. We had an expectation where if he would have shot, like if Beef Stew would have shot like 34% from three and was able to draw defenders away and create avenues for other lanes to score for the the team, then that would work. But 37% and now you've added on the ability to drive and play off ball to, you know, create points in transition and create points on your own in isolation. Like that's, very impressive for Beast too. We did not expect that at all from him. I definitely didn't. And to see it gradually build like this from him has been really cool, man. Again, I I didn't expect it at all for this season. So my most humble apologies to Beast too, and my voice cracking right there. But I'm very proud to see what he's doing this season. It's been very, very, very cool to see him play this well. Now, my last takeaway. I kind of hinted at it a little bit. And I think Piston fans need to be fair in this regard. I think you have to give Dwayne Casey some credit. If we're going to be upset with Dwayne Casey when the team comes out unprepared, if we're going to be upset when Dwayne Casey has 
lineup adjustments that look terrible, like playing extended Corey Joseph minutes or letting Hamadou play in minutes or whoever else that just seems not to be fitting with the team. He'd be killing it on the bench too long. If we're going to grill him for that, we have to give him credit in games like these where the Pistons have their backs against the wall, where they seem maybe a little bit deflated by losing Kay Cunningham, who's not even on the bench anymore for them. He used to be at least a support system to rah-rah and keep them pepped up, you know, during timeouts. Now that he has surgery, he's not even on the bench. So that's going to have to be your players to stay in tune to the game. But at the same time, it's also going to start from your coach. And for Dwayne Casey to keep the Pistons this engaged and this motivated and competitive in these type of games, even going back to the West Coast trip that they took, the Pistons have been way more competitive than we expected them to be. That has to be a credit to Dwayne Casey. It just has to. Again, we can question his fit for the long haul a different time. We can talk about that. I know there's plenty of you who don't believe in him, and I understand why. Trust me, I do. But let's be fair. Let's be fair and let's be objective. When you put together games like this, and again, it's not just, you know, on the backs of your old veterans. You're seeing the young guys step up. You're seeing Duran play well. You're seeing Sadiq expand his game. Well, not Sadiq, sorry. You're seeing Isaiah Stewart expand his game. And you're seeing Killian turn into a different player. That has to go to the credit of Dwayne Casey to somewhat. I know, I know. It's a lot of smoke for Dwayne Casey. But again, when you see things like this, when you see performances like this, it has to be to his credit. It can't be, you know, shame every single time his name is brought up. If the Pistons are winning and competing in games they ain't got no business winning or competing in, he has to get some credit for that. Again, we'll talk about the long term at a different time. But for now, he deserves credit where credit is due. And so do the Detroit Pistons, man, for this victory. 141-134. Color me impressed for tonight. Talk to me in the comment section, though. I'd love to hear from you about the Pistons. What did you think about their victory tonight against the Hornets? Who was your MVP for the game? What were your thoughts about the back and forth? Tell me. Talk to me. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Help us push up and ramp up to 6,000 subscribers. We would greatly appreciate your support there. Make sure you're tapping in on our social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the above. Search and follow Detroit Sports Nation. And, of course, follow me as well at I am Eric Vincent. Thank you so much for all your support. We appreciate you so much for being here. I'll be back again soon right here with another update from the DSN News Desk. Peace.